All right, hey guys, and welcome to another video. So today I went through my Sega Genesis collection and I pulled out a stack of games that I wanted to sit down and kind of talk about with you guys, maybe give you some good recommendations in case you're looking for something new to play on your Sega Genesis. A lot of these games are just kind of things that I played back in my childhood. I might have fond memories of them or something I discovered and played recently for the first time. Either way, it's a different kind of good variety of genres and games, so hopefully there's at least something in here that would be of interest to you. Also, before we begin here, let me know in the comments below um, if you notice a increase in the quality of my mic or video. I, I played around with some of my settings, so if you notice an improvement, let me know in the comments below. But what do you say we get started here? First game that I wanted to talk about is one of my new favorite games on the Sega Genesis, and that is Devilish, with the subtitle The Next Possession, but it's more commonly just referred to as Devilish. You may recall this game also being on the Game Gear, however, this is you know, while it is related, it is still pretty dif different from the Game Gear version. There's a lot of differences. So the best way I can sum up Devilish is think of a sort of breakout, arcanoid, uh, level-based adventure action game, I guess. So think of it when you play an arcanoid game or a breakout game, right? You got the paddle, you got the ball, you're trying to break bricks at the top. And then think of that in a fantasy action game setting where the level is scrolling from bottom to top you're defeating monstrous bosses you're defeating weird enemies you're uh you know finding different shortcuts through the level there's branching paths all of this is being done with a breakout style paddle but the catch here is there's actually two paddles one of which is only controlled horizontally the other of which can be rotated so that it can either be both horizontal or vertical and you use this to try and direct the ball throughout the levels while picking up power-ups and uh, trying to like aid you in destroying the, the monsters or making it easier or harder in some instances to keep the ball in control. Now the game is not perfect. This might sound like a really cool idea. There's a lot of wonky physics going on with the ball on the paddle. You're going to have a lot of frustration trying to beat this game as it, it is extremely difficult. But if you give it some time, I think you'll really find a cool cool different kind of take on the genre there's no other game quite like this one that i've personally played uh, the music is also rocking the music in this game is phenomenal if you've never heard the soundtrack before definitely check this game out but be warned like i said it's really hard you might have to spend some time to get through it and the story i'm not going to spoil that for you enjoy the story it's uh it's an experience all right, next up is a game uh, that I played not too long ago, also for the first time, and that's Bimini Run. Now, this is a sort of unsuspecting game that you'd see in a bargain bin, right? And you'd probably maybe pass it up because it kind of just looks like something that wouldn't be too interesting. However, I'm here to tell you this game is actually quite special if you're into um, semi-open world mission-based games. And this is kind of a rarity on the platform for the Genesis or Mega Drive in that it's not a completely linear game. It might look like a sort of space harrier outrun kind of experience. And it's true, some levels can kind of feel that way. But it's actually open world structure with missions. So you kind of drive around these um, islands and you'll get uh, calls in on your, I guess your beep or your phone, whatever the heck it is in this game. I have no idea. A radio, I guess, right? Radio, of course. And they'll give you missions on the fly. It'll be like, all right, go chase this person down, go destroy these uh, towers over here. Um, and it's different every time you play the game, right? So it's not the same experience every time. I, from what I remember, I think the world will actually be slightly different structurally a little bit every time you play it but don't quote me on that i could be completely wrong on that but either way it's a very challenging game one shot and you're dead but it's got some great visuals if you're a fan of parallax scrolling and like sort of faked 3d effects from 16-bit era games you're gonna love this it gets a little weird and wacky as, as the game goes on but i'm not gonna spoil that for you i'll let you find that out it's also got a story you're trying to kid or you're trying to rescue like your kidnapped girlfriend or something and also save the world at the same time from a big bad evil guy so yeah it's got that fun sort of like 80s action film vibe to it and if you haven't checked out Bimini Run I would highly recommend it. Okay next is one of my favorite RPGs on the Sega Genesis. This is also a childhood game of mine that I played when I was really young. Didn't quite understand it. I tried to make my way through the game the best I could but when I was really young it was a little hard for me to kind of grasp the grinding aspect of this game because it is a little bit hard to understand how you're supposed to level up in, in uh, Sorcerer's Kingdom on the Sega Genesis. One of the lesser talked about games in terms of RPGs on the platform, but I think if you give this game some time, it's not going to win any awards in the story. In fact, the story is almost non-existent. It's not really worth paying attention to. You really come to this game for the music. The music is once again amazing. One of the reasons why I love certain Genesis music so much, this is one of those soundtracks, but also the way that you can kind of go through the game and customize your party. You can play this in a multitude of ways. You can 
pretty much make it so that one of your characters, be it the main character, sub characters, um, maybe you give all of them your best equipment and you make sure that they only levels because every time that you take an action with a character in this game, they gain the experience. So if you neglect a character for the whole game, they're not going to gain any levels and you can switch between party members on the fly and sort of like this real time strategy turn based style gameplay where every time you get a turn, you have to choose which party member you're going to let take a turn. So whether you want to use Elrond for a big bombastic magic spell, the main character for some kind of sword slash or or maybe use midi for a heal. Um, there's all different options that you can go through for the combat in this. It is quite grindy. It's also not a long game, so a lot of your time spent in this is going to be grinding and killing enemies, but it's also not long. You can finish this easily in anywhere between 12 to 18 hours, so if you're looking for a low commitment to finishing a Genesis RPG, I think you might have something fun to find in this. Um, it's got a nice sense of discovery, lots of hidden items. The dungeons are somewhat fun to explore, even though they're a little bit labyrinth-like, but I think if you're looking for something a little bit, you know, not too flashy, but a good time, Sorcerer's Kingdom is a, is a game to check out. This is another childhood favorite of mine, and this is X Mutants or EX Mutants, whatever you prefer. Uh, a lot of people look at the cover of this and they think it's like a Marvel game or something, right? It got that kind of comic book style to it. But this is one that I really enjoyed when I was younger, and I, I'm very surprised because as I got older and started discovering more people's opinions on YouTube and, and whatnot and Twitch, uh, a lot of people aren't the biggest fan of this game, mostly because of the difficulty. It's considered quite high and hard to beat, and I don't disagree with them. I actually never beat this game as a kid. It wasn't until recently that I made it, well, a few years ago, that I kind of made it towards the end of the game, and even then I still don't think I finished it. This game is actually very hard, but it's, uh, it's a pretty straightforward action platformer with... Um, some interesting level layouts and designs. They're 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 not super straightforward. Like there's a lot of situations where you can either like take an upper path or a lower path, and uh, it's got you know your typical sort of Castlevania style like throwing axe pickups and different ways that you can dispatch enemies beyond just your typical hacks and slashes that you would you would normally do. Um, it's also got quite a lot of cutscenes, a lot of cutscenes between levels with talking between the enemies and the main bosses and the, the characters and whatnot. So they they try and develop a sort of um, a little bit of a lore background behind this game but uh, I don't think this game is too hard to get a hold of these days at all so if you've better ever, ever been curious and you see this give it a chance worth trying out this is another one that I used to love when I was younger and that is mutant fighter or Mazen Saga Mutant Fighter, excuse me. Um, this game is getting a little harder to get, but if you have the means to check it out, definitely, by all means, give it a try, because it's a nice melding of two different genres. It's got uh, your typical side-scrolling sort of beat-em-up style levels, but the, the, the thing that makes this really different is that typically beat-em-ups of this era, the sprites were really large, really zoomed in. This game is scaled back a lot. The sprites are a lot smaller, you see more of the screen, you can see more of the enemies approaching you. Um, it is extremely difficult. This is another really hard game. I'm actually not sure how I even managed to get as far as I did when I was younger in this game, but it's it's pretty straightforward in terms of your attacks, your jumps, your, your stuns, your knockdowns, you've got your special move that of course drains your health for using it, but but the thing that makes it really special are the boss battles, right? Giant sort of like Ultraman style fights where the, the thing that makes it kind of cool, right? I talked about this, the scaled down version of the beat-em-up levels. When you get into a boss fight, they suddenly scale the sprites up gigantically. They slow them down to give them this sort of like hulking kaiju style battle. And it really works, right? Because the normal combat is quite fast paced and then the boss battles are really slow. Giant sprites. And it feels really cool. It turns into essentially a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. And some of the other boss fights, too, uh, are pretty inventive. You know, you're fighting like a giant skeleton in the background where he's trying to hit you with his hands or stomp you with his feet, right? The, the first boss in the game is like this giant foot that's just trying to crush you. Uh, such a really, really cool game. Nothing else. I've never really played another beat-em-up quite like it. Uh, so if you ever have the chance, definitely check out Mazen Saga Mutant Fighter. All right, this is the one that I put off playing for a long time and recently sort of came back to um, last year sometime at, at some point. And this is OutRun 2019. Now, I know this game gets a lot of flack because it originally started development as a Sega or Mega CD game. It wasn't originally supposed to be a part of the OutRun series and they kind of turned it into that. They sort of went backwards instead of coming out on Sega CD. They put it out on the Genesis slash Mega Drive and slapped the OutRun name on it, I guess, to help it sell copies. I don't mind that. To because to be honest with you, when I played this game, it felt kind of like OutRun. And I think it's a really fun take on the series, even though you may not consider it part of the series. Uh, but I'm not that hardcore into it, right? I consider this an OutRun game. The thing that makes this special for me 
is the way that the boosting works, right? Trying to maintain your boost in this game is insanely difficult, and it's got a high skill ceiling if you're trying to maintain a boost and taking the turns at the same time. Uh, this game also has different levels, different floors, right? So typically you come into a branch of three paths instead of the typical two that a lot of these kind of games are known for. And um, a lot of the paths will actually put you on a bridge. So instead of just going you know, on a flat plane, suddenly you'll be on the top of a bridge. And if you fall down, you can actually come back down onto the lower levels. Um, very, very difficult because typically the bridges, they, they don't have railings, so you'll fall right off. Uh, also the music, the soundtrack in this, oh, my word. One of the best soundtracks I have heard on the Sega Genesis once again. Music for me is really important in games, and sometimes I think music can take a slightly good to mediocre game and make it a great one. And in this case, I think that this is a crowning example of one of those cases. It's not an amazing game. It's not a very good game it's it's a good game but when you take the soundtrack it's a great game right uh, definitely give it a try if you've been kind of putting it off if you consider yourself a fan of any kind of arcade style outrun racing games okay this is another weird one from my childhood that i revisited about a year or so year or two ago and uh, still had a lot of fun with it i wasn't expecting to enjoy this as much as i was and that is slaughter sport this is a really strange one-on-one -on -one fighting game that i had a lot of fond memories of the reason why i remember this so much is because the assortment of characters that you play as it's not your typical lineup of fighting game characters there's lots of weird mutant creatures uh, there's like this one blob character that's just arms um a little like android alien thing with a laser gun i mean there's some really really weird characters in this game and i think if you're kind of a big fighting game fan and you're looking for something a little different and out there check this game out i don't think you've quite played uh too many fighting games like this one so just a quick recommendation it's not a, it's not a good game it's not an amazing game but it's a game that you could have a good laugh out of Okay, here's another one that I discovered a couple of years ago, and that is Chase HQ2. First of all, I just wanted to give you a heads up. I know the spine on this game always looks like it's sun faded, but uh, in my research, that actually is how the spine looks. I know it looks very white and sun faded, um, but that is that is how it looks. Okay, so if you ever see this listed on eBay, that it's not sun faded. Okay, just letting you know because the cover is very bright and vibrant and colorful. So a nice Kaito arcade port to the Genesis. I had never played this before. Actually, one of my only exposures to the series was the one that was on Game Boy Color, and I was not a fan of that. So I was kind of hesitant to try this one out, but I was able to pick it up at, for a really good price um, several years ago. And I was really surprised. It's a very basic, very by-the-books arcade-style racing game. There's three different cars that you can choose from, and every level, there's, I think, five levels. Uh, the main objective is just to go fast, catch up to the car that you're trying to track down, and just keep ramming into them. There's no really weapons or anything. You're just trying to twist a metal style, destruction derby style, just ram into the enemy car. Um, pretty much make the car break down so you can catch the bad guy. And you do that five times, the game's over. You can easily beat this game in 15 minutes or under once you get pretty decent at it. Very short game. Uh, not an easy game to track down, so you know, make sure that you're very much aware that you're going to be getting an arcade experience that can be beat very quickly you're going to be playing this game for either score attack or like sort of time attacking it yourself and seeing how fast you can beat it but just wanted to let you know uh, this is not a game that i see mentioned too often because a lot of people are really not aware of it because it's kind of uncommon okay this is a this might be a kind of funny one for some people it is one of the most common games on the genesis and all platforms as far as i'm concerned and that is zoop a childhood favorite of mine um, this is a game that you probably see a lot of the cover in like eBay or just kind of sitting in a bargain bin out at a flea market or something or a garage sale. And you see Zoop everywhere. You've seen it in advertisements. It's a very well-known cover, right? But have you ever played Zoop? It's actually a great game. This this is one of my favorite puzzle games, believe it or not, and I have revisited this on many different versions. I played the Genesis version, the PS1 version, the Saturn version, the Jaguar version. Uh, the only one that I haven't yet to play is the Super Nintendo version. Um, I've played a lot of Zoop, and it's a challenging game. The soundtrack is really funky, but I'm very nostalgic for it. It's kind of hit or miss for some people. The visuals kind of trip you up. They use a lot of weird checkerboard patterns and colors that makes the game really challenging and kind of hard on the eyes at times. But once you get into the zone and you learn how to take the puzzle pieces and sort of like zap them and place them where they need to be and make these really big combos, and it's sort of a fight for survival, essentially. You're trying to survive to get to the end of this game. Beating this game is no small feat, especially the Genesis version. If you can beat the Genesis version, 
wow, you have my respect. Also, the PlayStation 1 version is also extremely hard. A lot different, too. It's sort of like uh, dance music and different visuals. It's uh, this, All the different ports of Zoop are quite different in some way, but I just wanted to let you know, try Zoop. It's actually quite good. Okay, this is just a quick recommendation. This one I played a few years ago, but I figured I'd throw it in here because a lot of people talk about beat-em-ups on the Sega Genesis, but I don't think they really talk too much about Mystical Fighter. It's one of the more uncommon Genesis beat-em-ups, but I kind of like the Shogun Dynasty era theme of this game, which I think, um, you know, some of you might kind of be interested in if you're tired of the same old formula of, like, Streets of Rage or style beat-em-ups, you know? Uh, just something a little bit different with some Japanese era creature designs and monster designs and bosses it's pretty by the books pretty simple i don't remember being blown away by this game by any means but visually it was kind of neat to go through the levels and check out the enemy designs and uh just a quick recommendation in case you're looking for something a little bit different a little more obscure that maybe you haven't heard of yet for your genesis this is another quick recommendation not by any means an amazing game but dynamite duke so the problem with this game is it's uncommon a little hard to get a hold of you need to know what you're getting into with this game it's extremely short um decently challenging but the thing that kind of set this one apart for me was it was a fun little uh, on rails you, you know the, the the bonus levels from alien storm on the genesis where you're sort of first person and you're shooting the backgrounds and shooting the enemies and getting power-ups that's pretty much that in in its own game right where you can see through duke there uh, you see through his back in the game believe it or not he's like he's always present in the front and uh, you're shooting enemies in the background shooting crates getting power-ups the levels are really short there's not many of them another game you can beat in under 20 minutes easy but the boss battles actually turn into like a punch out style boxing match where you're punching and and uh you know not really using your guns actually i think the boss the final boss battle i think uses guns but it's just this mix up of punching action and shooting action it's kind of a neat little arcadey style game uh, i don't know the history on dynamite duke i don't know if this was a port from somewhere or anything or if it was just exclusive to the genesis but worth checking out if you can get it for a good price don't go crazy on this one though like i said it's nothing special but just something that i think might be worth a try if you can uh find a cart cheap or something all right and my last one here once again not another amazing game i'm not like giving a high recommendation for this but just something a little different that isn't typically talked about uh, and that is chester cheetah too cool to fool okay now be be aware i'm recommending this more for people that are big fans of platformers maybe you've kind of felt like you've exhausted all the platformers on the genesis or the super nintendo and whatnot um the reason why i really enjoyed this one it's not a, it's not a great or even good platformer but if you're looking for something with really bright, vivid visuals, the colors in this game are like neon bright, really, really bright, vibrant game. Okay, like sort of Lion King style brightness and vividness of colors, almost, you know, a lot of the Disney style Genesis platformers. Um, the gameplay is a little weird, uh, the way that this game handles running and walking really slow in level design. Like I said, I'm not recommending this for the gameplay. I'm just kind of recommending this because it's not something that I typically see. Uh, platformer fans talk about um but it's it's more so you play this for the theme of it the nostalgia of it chester cheetah right everybody remembers that guy uh still kind of kicking these days maybe i i don't know what they're doing with the advertising for him to be honest um but yeah play it for the visuals play it for the the janky fun that you'll have and the good laughs that you'll get out of this this weird little platformer uh, but that's gonna do it those are my Genesis recommendations. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you found at least one game that you're now interested in. Hope you enjoyed uh, the recommendations. And if you want to see more videos like this for recommendations on other consoles, as always, be sure to let me know uh, in the comments below or with a like. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.